The Four Noble Truths October 19th, 1979 The words of the Lord Buddha are not ordinary because they originated from a brilliant and profound mind. If they had not been so, how could they destroy the gilesas of countless sentient beings, free them from dukkha, and enlighten them right in his presence? In fact, his transcendent teaching is indispensable and vital for the removal of the gilesas and instantaneous enlightenment. Such is the power of experiential truth. Memory has no such power. Not a single gilesa can be eliminated by memory. For example, you can recite, Nibbana is the supreme happiness, Nibbana is the supreme emptiness, but it can't get you to Nibbana. Talking about Nibbana doesn't get you to Nibbana, but practicing mental development will. When you do, you can distinguish truth from falsehood. The jitta of a person who memorizes the scriptures is still tainted with the gilesas. The tamma realized in the jitta from practice is the real tamma. Sati and banya appear in the jitta. Ignorance and the gilesas also appear in the jitta. It's in the jitta where you destroy the gilesas and realize freedom from dukkha. Nowhere else. As a practitioner, you should always watch your jitta if you want to remove the gilesas with the tamma teaching. You should investigate everything that the jitta is involved with. Find out why it has to get involved with these things, and identify the trouble and pain that follow with sati and banya. You can't run away from the Four Noble Truths. The Lord Buddha said Dukkha is a reality, although no one in the world has any desire for it. Why did he say Dukkha and the origin of Dukkha are noble truths? Because they are real. If you don't remove the Gilesas, Dhanha and Asava with Magga, you will never eliminate Dukkha. It is therefore necessary to develop Magga, which is also a noble truth, so that Nirodha, the cessation of Dukkha, can appear. Nirodha, the cessation of Dukkha, is also a noble truth. These four noble truths are in the Jitta. The Jitta is the container for the Gilesas, Tarnha and Asava, the endless cycle of birth, death and rebirth, and every form of Dukkha and enlightenment. Wisdom originates in the Jitta. The Gilesas are neutralized in the Jitta. Freedom from Dukkha is realized in the Jitta. The transcendental and blissful experience occurs in the Jitta. Having attained enlightenment, the Jitta can either be called Thamma or the purified Jitta. The term Jitta is used whilst it's still in possession of the five Kantas because they are Sammati, conventional reality and the purified jitta has to abide with the norms of samadhi despite being an absolute reality. After the jitta has realized absolute reality, it does not matter what it is called. The problem is with the gilesas, which are extremely tenacious. No other task is more grueling than the elimination of the gilesas that are deeply embedded in the jitta. The gilesas are as infinite as the jitta is infinite, as deep as the jitta is deep, and they are capable of dragging the jitta to wander endlessly in the various realms of existence. If you had to display the existences in dukkha that you've gone through, it would fill the whole world. If everyone had to display his or her gilesas, dangha, asava, dukkha, and existences, there wouldn't be enough room to show them. To eliminate the gilesas, you mustn't do it lightly. If you aren't earnest with your practice, you will never become enlightened. When you've earnestly developed Magga, the weapon that will destroy the gilesas to full maturity, you will see the true nature of the gilesas, which are the Magga's opponents, and eliminate them with an earth-shattering bang like the Lord Buddha and his enlightened disciples did. What they achieved still rings true today. Their illustrious achievements are celebrated by Buddhists of all nationalities. 
How could they be so highly esteemed if they were not enlightened? You have to put faith in them before the absolute truth can materialize. The task of neutralizing the Kilesis is an arduous one. I can confidently attest to this fact. It's a lot more difficult to discipline human beings than it is to train animals because human beings are more sophisticated than animals. Correspondingly, the development of human beings takes more effort than animals. It requires a lot more effort, forbearance, and know-how. Disciplining and developing human beings is the most difficult task. Who are these human beings? I'm referring to the Lord Buddha, who strived in disciplining himself until he passed out. Is this difficult or not? I have also read from the scriptures how hard it was for the enlightened disciples to discipline themselves also. When I say how hard it is to train human beings, I mean you. You are responsible for training yourself to become good and virtuous by removing all evils which are the products of the Gilesas from your hearts. This task is very arduous and requires a lot of effort, otherwise you won't be able to come up with any results. You have to fight the Gilesas blow for blow and must not be afraid of death which follows you like your shadow. When the time comes, everybody, good or bad, still possessed with the Gelesis or not, will have to die. Once you've acquired a body, you've also acquired death. Before you die, you should achieve the task of training yourself, completely eliminate the Gelesis, and realize the supreme happiness. As long as the Gelesis are still embedded in your jitta, there won't be any supreme happiness. Though you might look happy, you're just putting up a front because you're still full of greed, hatred, and delusion. This kind of happiness is not your goal. Your goal is the supreme happiness of enlightenment that can only be realized through strenuous exertion. You should take the Lord Buddha as your role model. When you are discouraged, you should recollect the Lord Buddha's virtues. If the discouragement still remains, you should recollect the Tammas and the Sankha's virtues. Then your discouragement will disappear. This is the way to muster up your courage. The Lord Buddha is the victor. When you think of him, you will become courageous. You should always look at the way he practiced. The Jitta can't freely do what it pleases because it's under the Gilesa's controls like a prisoner who is always watched by guards. It's also true of the activities of Sunya and Sankara, which are always supervised by the Gilesas. The Jitta is like a buffalo held on a leash whilst left grazing in the pasture. We're all completely ignorant of the Gilesas' harmfulness. As a result, the Gilesas are having a great time amassing their power and influence over the hearts of all sentient beings. None of these beings can escape from their grip, except those who take up the Tamma teaching with strenuous exertion, which is the only way for them to be free. You must therefore strive for the total elimination of the Gilesas. After the Gilesas have been completely eliminated by Sati, Banya, Sattha, and Virya, the Kantas, such as thoughts and memory, will all be free from the Gilesas' influences and become the Tamma's assistants in propagating the Lord Buddha's teaching to others. The Lord Buddha, after having attained enlightenment, used his kantas to teach the Tamma to the world for 45 years. How happy will you be after you are freed from the prison of the Varta Jitta, which is the Jitta that is still under the Gelesis' influences and controls, and the prison of the Varta Jagga, which is the endless cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, the Vata Jagga and the Vata Jitta have now been destroyed by the middle way of practice, the Madhima Bhadibhada. You can now see very clearly that the Gilesas, regardless of how many there were, were the master puppeteers that supervised every activity of the Kantas. The one who had to reap the Kantas' actions driven by the Gilesas was the Jitta, which was like a toilet bowl for the filth of greed, hatred, delusion, lust, and suffering. When all of this filth has been removed, you will see clearly that there is nothing left to oppress the jitta. 
Throughout the day and night, you can freely see, hear, taste, smell, touch, and think about anything without having any love or hatred for them. Previously, you were driven by the Galesis to think endlessly, aimlessly, and emotionally. Mm. Now you think rationally, purposefully, and without any stress. This is the result of training human beings. You have to earnestly exert yourself even if it's difficult. The Lord Buddha and his enlightened disciples all seriously exerted themselves and are now your role models. You are the Lord Buddha's follower and a frontline soldier. How can you be weak and relent in your exertion? As a bhikkhu or Buddhist monk, you're a frontline soldier. Furthermore, you're a Gamartana bhikkhu who is intent in the practice for the realization of the Four Noble Truths. If you are weak and discouraged, you are not following the Tamma teaching. Therefore, you must be earnest and resolute. Don't ever dismiss from your mind that the training of human beings is extremely hard. This is a very vital point to remember. Every type of Gilesa, from the coarse to the intermediate to the subtle ones, are all harmful like fire. Be it the fire itself or the sparks from the fire, they are all hot and only differ in their intensity. All of them are detrimental. It's best to extinguish all of them. Then it will be Natizandi Barang Sukang. No happiness can be greater than the happiness of the absolute peace which the practitioner of mental development will come to possess following the total extinction of the Gilesas. There is no need to ask anybody for confirmation regarding this attainment. It doesn't matter how long ago the Lord Buddha passed away. I speak with the greatest respect for the Lord Buddha, not out of contempt. For whom did the Lord Buddha teach Sandertiko? Tamma is self-evident. For whom did he teach Bhattatangvedetabbovinyuhi? Tamma realized here and now by the wise. For whom did he teach the Madhima Padibada the Tagatena Pisambutta? The middle way, if not for all of us practitioners. To neutralize the Kilesas, you have to do it right here in your Chitta. How can you not know when the Gilesas gradually disappear and happiness subsequently appears? The virtue of Sandirtiko, or being self-evident, is not solely preserved for the Lord Buddha and his enlightened disciples, because it's the result from following the middle way, the Madhima Bardibada. When you earnestly practice, you will experience this result right in your Jitta, and you will be totally rid of all doubts. I'm very concerned for my students. I'm getting older with each passing day. Eventually, I will have to lay down my teaching responsibility. Taking care of my body will eventually take up all my strength and energy. I'll have to let go of everything else like Tana Dan Kao, who can only watch his breath until it expires. But crucially, his jitta is never weakened. To him, his body is just a puppet he plays with. Para Havebanza Kanta. The five kantas are very heavy burdens. You play with them until they expire. After you're separated from them, you'll be free from all responsibilities, worries, and anxieties. The numbers of enlightened teachers are steadily decreasing and close to extinction. Now is the time to really concentrate on your exertion. You must never see anything in the entire world to be more valuable and greater than enlightenment. If there were, the jitta would definitely not let it go. It would not abandon its wrong views, love, hatred, and anger that are relished by everybody. We all like anger and love, though we know they hurt. According to the Tamma teaching, there's nothing better than a heart freed of love and anger. When you realize this fact, you will relinquish everything and develop mental calm, because the happiness derived from mental calm is far superior to all other happiness. The calmer your mind becomes, the more blissful you will be, and the more you will be able to relinquish and eventually let go of everything. You will relinquish visible objects, sounds, aromas, flavors, tactile sensations, and the five kantas, ropa, vedana, sanya, sankara, and vinyarna, because they aren't satisfactory. All that is left for you to let go of is the jitta. 
What makes you love it and remain attached to it? Who is this perpetrator? You'll keep on investigating until you find it and let it go. You will then have relinquished everything. This sounds rather easy, but looking back at the way I had to exert myself, it wasn't that easy because I had to wager my life for it. When you have fulfilled all the prerequisites, you will definitely become enlightened, so you have to be resolute and correct with your practice. Don't ever make any trouble here. From the time this monastery was established, there has never been such an incident. There has never been any quarrel amongst the monks, because everyone respects the Tamma, thus making it easy for everyone to live in harmony. You are here to eliminate the Gelesas, so you mustn't let the Gelesas incite you to make any trouble, because it's really shameful. As a practicing monk, you must never think you're better than others, because this is morally wrong. When you act like you're better than others, you're just showing your dark side for others to see. If you're really good, you don't have to show off, because it will be obvious. If you are good and don't flaunt it, you're really good. As a Thamma practitioner, you have to be rational, not emotional. If you want to be good, but don't have any goodness in you, you can't be good. You're not good simply because you want to be, and when you try to impress others with how good you are, your actions will be futile, shameful, and vulgar. This is the work of the Gilesas that you're supposed to eliminate. How can you allow them to incite you to quarrel with other monks like dogs do? Monks are not dogs, and this monastery is not a doghouse. When monks quarrel, it's like dogs fighting, and the worst thing that can happen to a monastery. Here I'm merely illustrating a point. It doesn't mean that the monks here quarrel. I'm merely pointing out the differences between good and bad, benefit and damage. You are here to develop moral excellence, so you have to be always mindful of your actions. When you're mad at someone, you have to remind yourself that this is the work of the Keleses that you must neutralize, not nurture. The more you think about the object of your displeasure, the more you will nourish the Keleses and your delusion. Instead, you must look at your jitta, which is being consumed by the fire of anger that you must extinguish before spreading out to burn others. As a practitioner, you must always obanaiko, look at your jitta.